Nikon have always made amazing macro lenses since the film photography days. So today we're going to take out their 105mm micro lens and see if it's up to scratch. Wow, I'm so bad at macro photography. I'm gonna try to get one photo of a bullet. So at the moment, I do not know where we are, but we are on the way to the snowy mountains for a snowboarding trip this weekend. But we decided along the way, we'll do a little review for you guys, because we're nice people. So now I'm just going to talk about my first impressions on the design of the Nikon 105mm micro lens. So first off, it's a bit weighty but it's not too heavy and it's not too bulky either so you can use it for a long period of time. Like any other Nikon high-end lens, the construction is solid, the focus ring is super smooth and is well rubberized. You've got your typical switches such as your manual to autofocus override switch, your focus limiter which allows you to do the full range of the focusing to a infinity to 0.5 meter range. And lastly, you have an image stabilization switch at the bottom. Now there's one thing about this lens where I'm not too sure about. I've done a lot of digging, I've asked a lot of people, and not anyone can confirm with me if the lens is weather sealed. So if you know if it's weather sealed, let us know in the comments below. But at the moment, I'm just gonna say it's not weather sealed. And now we're gonna hit the road right now. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Kuma. <laughs> so we've now arrived in the town of Kuma, which is about 400 k's away from Sydney, and I'm going to talk about the key features of the 105mm f2.8 macro lens. So firstly, it's got a magnification ratio of 1 to 1, meaning you're going to get a true macro experience whilst using the lens. It's got a minimum aperture of f32 and a maximum aperture of f2.8, giving you a large range over your depth of field. To back it up, it's got a 9 rounded blade aperture diaphragm to get clean, nice and clear, crispy bokeh, and it's got one extra load dispersion element to help with chromatic aberrations as well as colour fringing. It's double coated with nano coating and super integrated coating to get maximum light transfer as well as control with flaring and a silent wave autofocus motor to get a faster autofocus experience. Hey look, sitting ducks. So one of the best things about the 105mm macro is because it's got a focal length of 105mm, like this situation I'm in right now, I can be far away from the subject and still get a nice macro look out of the lens which is brilliant there's only one thing really about the motor although it is silent it doesn't make like a weird robot noise when it's focusing but it does make a knocking noise when you're using it so just be aware that if you need to get up close to something it's probably not ideal as they'll probably hear the lens just trying to focus So right now I'm using a Nikon D750 paired with the 105mm macro and I'm getting some pretty decent shots. They are super sharp. The lens basically looks like it's got no barrel distortion at all. It, everything just looks super clean, which is fantastic. One of the best features that I've noticed about the 105mm macro is the VR. It helps a lot when you're trying to focus on subjects up close. Um, one thing I did notice on top of that though is that if you do get a bit closer to your subject I feel like the 105 struggles a bit. Generally the autofocus is amazing but as you start getting a bit bit closer to your subject than normal it does tend to knock around and try and find your subject. Today's sample images were shot on a Nikon D750 combined with the Nikon 105mm micro lens. Image quality is brilliant on the lens. Linear distortion, chromatic apparitions is basically non-existent in this lens and it is damn sharp. Shooting above f4 gets you near perfect performance in terms of sharpness but still performs well wide open. 
There is a tad amount of softness in the corners when doing macro work, but at that point, most things that aren't the subject tend to become bokeh anyway. Speaking of bokeh, it is great, and even when you're just using this lens as a telephoto or portrait lens, the bokeh is brilliant and the image quality is superb. We've made it to Perisher, so we're going to end the video here. To sum up, the Nikon 105mm macro is a lens that is a must-have for any macro enthusiast. Although it does come at a premium price, and because of its long focal length, it may not be for everyone. For people who are looking for a lens that's good for portraits as well, definitely consider the 105mm macro. If you are a person who does underwater photography or food photography and need to get closer up, we recommend getting the Nikon 60mm micro lens instead. If you have any questions on the Nikon 105mm micro, pop them in the comments below. Make sure to follow our Facebook, Instagram and our blog, links to those in our description below to stay up to date with our latest events and what's going on in store. Lastly, if you enjoyed our video, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our next update. Now it's time to hit the mountain with my snowboard, wherever it is.